What's up, everybody? My name is Aaron, and welcome to the Mad Maker Studio. And welcome back to where the water tastes like wine. Right now, I think what we're going to do, we're going to walk back up north. I want to tackle Rose and Cassidy again because it seems like with all these characters in their final chapters, we're having to um, see them twice to finish it out. So I'm going to go ahead and work my way back north if I can get around <laughs> these effing mountains again. The travelers at this campfire are all women, women with long knives hanging from their belts. They let you join their camp in exchange for news about the towns you passed to get here. Maybe they're hiding from something, but you feel safe getting a good night's sleep here. Move on. Well, hey there. You're getting to be a familiar face. But it's weird. I, I can't remember what you look like when you're not sitting right there. You ever meet someone like that? Wow. Okay, so we've got the, the bones and then the rose and these are probably her companions. Anyway, I guess I should finish the story. Tell you about the commune and bring you right up to the now. Or whatever this time is I'm in. Sometimes it doesn't seem like reality, you dig? Unstuck in time, maybe, like that one cat in the book. But anyway, what's the most exciting story you got? Oh, jumping right into the thrilling. Oh, wow. You got that straight shit totally my bag. Trust is a huge part of our deal. You really have to trust everyone when you live communally with them. Your life just depends on those people and their stability. So anyway, got any good ghost stories? Anything scary or weird? Oh, so many ghost stories. Oh wow, that's scary stuff. You are really good at telling these. Family. Yeah, they're my family. We all take care of the kids and each other. We bicker and fight, sure, but it's so nice having such a big family to watch each other. Anyway, you got any good sad ones stored up? <laughs> I guess I want to cry a little. It's okay to cry. Oh, wow. Do you know what happened next? They deserve a little love after that. Sadness? Yeah, I'm a little sad about it. Sometimes I wonder, was that it? Was it just a few short years where it seemed like we could change the world and then the world forgot? There's still a few places where we're trying to change, but they're so small. So, you seen anything really hilarious out here? Funnily enough, I have. Ha! <laughs> ah, you got a groovy sense of humor, stranger. Our morality? We still live the values. Even more, really. No burning gas up chasing the band, and we worked for our own food, and it all came straight from the earth. You know, I'd love to hear a really good scary story. Well, let's see what we have. Oh man, that's really good. Good and scary, I mean. Look, you work as hard as you can, and sometimes a bad season happens. Drought or flood. It's all just fate. We talked the whole night again. I've got to get ready to hit the road. Oh, yeah, so we got to come back and see her one more time to finish out her chapter four. You've probably got a long way to travel too, don't you? I found my kind of good life. But I can tell you're still searching for yours. Maybe our paths are gonna cross again. They tend to do that a lot, don't they? Keep looking for me on the roads. You got it, girlfriend. Whew!
Listen to this, blurts a boy loitering outside this grocery store. He works his way through a long and strange story about a man who fed travelers to his dogs. There, he finishes. What do you think? Wait a minute. Whoa, you know this story. It's the story of the man who cured meat for a living, but wildly altered. For a couple moments, you're too surprised to respond. Seriously, the boy insists. What do you think about that one? It's a great story. He smiles sheepishly. Thanks, he says. I heard it from my brother. Move on. Oh, we've got... How are our stats looking? You spend a while in the cool shade at this gas station, you notice three kids sitting beside their family car while their parents argue loudly with the cashier inside. The children seem embarrassed. You see the oldest brother lean over and distract his siblings with a story. Listen in. He starts telling them a story about the duck master Edward D. Pembroke. You realize almost instantly that he's telling a new version of the tale of the ducks in the hotel fountain, but with new, exciting, over-the-top details. He tells it well. When the parents come stomping furiously out of the gas station, you make yourself scarce, missing the ending of the boy's new story, but the part you heard is definitely easy to remember. It'll stick with you for a while. Move on. We meet once again, Shikis, my friend. I am glad. It's good to see you again. Have you come to hear the final part of my story about what happened when we returned to Dean Bakaya, our homeland? Yes, I have. Shikis, my friend, tell me a funny story. I am sure you hear many on the road. Oh, so many. It's good to laugh. Our choices? If we are to survive, the only option we have is to continue down the pollen path. Even in the face of drought, disease, or the encroaching bee laganas and their childish ways. Chickas, please tell me a story with a little bit of fear in it. Something scary. You are a good storyteller. It's often hard for me to like scary stories, but I liked this one. Freedom? The sun moves through the sky on an unrestricted path, but it has chosen its destination. It is in sync with nature and knows its destiny. Yet sometimes the most liberated one can be is in the company of another. Oh, my journey has been blessed as I walk this path with you, Shikis, my friend. I feel honored. Shikis, my friend. Can you tell me a story that looks to the future with hope? Hopeful, hopeful stories. Here's one right here. The Dinkbe are like that too, strong in the face of adversity. That story brings me hope. The past. Looking back at the pain our people have suffered since the Bilagana invaded our homeland, Dine Bekeya has only brought negative thoughts that create sickness. As Dine, we must not forget the evil ways of this invasive country, but we must also fight this sickness before it infects our future. Shikis, my friend. Can you tell me a story that brings strength to those who hear it? Oh. I'm gonna miss her. Like every time we close a chapter on these characters, it feels like I'm saying goodbye to a friend. That was a good story. 
It pleases me to hear about people taking strength from each other, or from the land, or from themselves. Joy. Well, the water was not like the water from Tizil. When the children played, it was a different type of laughter and movement. We learned how to become reliant on one another and to find pleasure in such small things. Shikis, my friend, can you tell me a story that looks to the future with hope? Oh, is this our last story? It might be. That was a good story. It pleases me to hear about people taking strength from each other, or from the land, or from themselves. Heaven! They can't believe in the beauty way. We live our lives maintaining a delicate balance with the world. It is our livelihood. And because we pay reverence to who we are as a people, we have not faced the same fate as the Anathazi whose ruins we have seen among the rocks. Our story doesn't end here. The story is still being told. Yes, and this also pulls back to where some of the character stories that we completed early on, I was feeling frustrated because it felt like I wasn't getting the closure that I wanted. And like, surely there's still more, there's more to the story. There has to be. But there's no definitive beginning or end because there's the stories will always grow. They're still being told. Every time we let a story grow, it's like, you know, there's a grain of truth that started from. It's not over yet. And that's okay. As long as our language, culture, and traditions are alive and evolving, we are actively telling the story of who we are and where we have come from. But for now, the story of Hwilti is finished. With beauty may I walk. With beauty before me may I walk. With beauty behind me may I walk. With beauty above me may I walk. With beauty all around me may I walk. It is finished in beauty. Oh. It is finished in beauty. Oh, she, I, I just feel like she just lifted my spirits way up. Oh, I'm gonna miss her. Oh, we finished another character. All right, Cassidy, show us what you got. What will your transformation look like? You want to know something funny? I've been misguided the whole time I've been speaking with you. Oh my gosh, that's... Wow. There's, There's a lot to unpack with this imagery here. I was in the library in Seattle and I found Ovid's Remedia Amoris, The Cures for Love. There's a part where he specifically advises against traveling alone to overcome a heartbreak, which is exactly what I've been doing for so long. I laughed, a wild, bestial laugh. They came over and kicked me out. You'll never know what you come across when you read whatever you can. Sometimes I want to hear a sadness that resonates with my own. Do you know any stories like that? The tragedy. In that story, it's real. Have you ever tried writing poetry? Oh, Cassie, you, you look like you're having a hard time right now. For a long time, suffering and wretchedness was all I could see. It hurt my work. It's a blinkered view. I'm struggling to see past the storm clouds of my own mental state. Too many sad words and they just flop around and die on the page. If I can recapture some of the highs and pair them with the lows, then I might be getting somewhere. 
Sometimes I want to hear a sadness that resonates with my own. Do you know any stories like that? That one was like getting locked out in the cold with nothing but your sorrow. I liked it. Silas made his choice. I hope he is happy. Maybe he and Pauline have something good going on. For a long time, I couldn't stop thinking about finding them in Frisco. I don't know why. To see if they really were happy together? I'll let them be. They'll be driving each other crazy soon enough. I need an optimistic story right now. Something to put a smile on my face. Can you think of any like that? I certainly can. That's a good one. We do reach up like that, towards hope. Poetry is my heaven. A poem is a fixed set of words, but it doesn't end there. It's an organism, too. Electrically alive, just like you and me. How did I forget the magic of that work? The way words can be assembled into a perfect expression of feeling, essence, pen on paper, ink and shapes, the record of a human soul. Alone, out here, I spend too much time inside my own head. Can you tell me a hopeful story to lighten my mood? I like that one. Makes me feel the way Silas used to in the old days. The future? I don't know what's to come after all this, but at the moment I can't bring myself to care. The whole time I wandered alone, I lived in the past and put all of my hopes in something yet to come. I need to let go of all of that. I've decided there's no such thing as the future. Interesting take. It's a healthier way to go about this business of living. Sometimes I want to hear a sadness that resonates with my own. Do you know any stories like that? That one was like getting locked out in the cold with nothing but your sorrow. I liked it. I was a prisoner to my own regrets, to my own hopeless wishes. I still wish Pauline had stayed married to that old man. Still wish she hadn't seen what I saw in Silas, because she took that from me. But that wish doesn't consume me like it used to. For a long time, I knew I was a prisoner of my mind, but I didn't know how to break out. In the end, I had to grasp the chain in my hands and smash it. Nothing more to it than that. It's time for me to go soon. We spent all night long talking. I liked that. I feel like I have better things to say now, and sharing them makes me happier. If you find yourself heading out this way, look around for me. I'd like to sit and talk again. Okay. We'll see you one more time, Cassidy. Oh, is this him also right in front of us again? It is, um, so we're going to not go that way. We've got uh, we've got Cassidy, Rose, Fidelina, and Bertha left now. So I'm back in Tennessee. The stories out here are real slim pickings now. We we've not gotten any more than 187, and we still have 50 more out there. And I'm wondering if those might have populated based on if we made certain decisions elsewhere or if I'm just not looking hard enough. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here and we'll pick it up next time. We've got uh, four characters remaining. We've got Bertha, Cassidy, and Fidelina, and Rose. I want to go see Bertha and Fidelina next episode. And then the episode after that, we'll go see Cassidy and Rose and everywhere else. I'm going to walk and travel as much as I can just to see if I can find another story tucked away in a corner. And if I find it, I'll, of course, insert it in here. 
But for now, I'm going to leave this episode of Where the Water Tastes Like Wine here. Thank you so much for joining me. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope to see you next time. Bye!